Video games nowadays are never truly finished. They are either in an endless development cycle or extra content is added over time on top of a finished product to keep its player base engaged. The concept of roadmaps in gaming exists pretty much since this field of entertainment became an actual industry, but not in the way we see today. Game development is usually composed of six distinct phases – pre-production, production, testing, pre-launch, launch and post-production. Pre-production is by far the most important phase in game development, being the time when game designers and concept artists create the foundation of the game on all levels – the theme, the aesthetic, core gameplay loop, mechanical synergy, additional features, marketing, monetization and so on. Honestly, that last one shouldn't be much of a priority, but it's 2022 where $70 games have a paid battle pass, but that's besides the point here. Production is where 19% of the time developing the game will be. This is when all the source code, net code, models, textures, audio and pretty much every software component of the game itself is created. This phase is relevant for today's video and I will explain why in a bit. Testing is the phase when pre-alphas and alphas become commonplace exclusively used by QA teams to ensure that the game is bug-free by the time it reaches the shelves. These alphas are never shown to the public. You know why? Because they look like this. They are two bare bones and a lot of stuff lacks models or textures since the mechanics are being tested for bugs or glitches. If a game shows footage under the premise that it's in alpha, just know that it's a bunch of bullshit. Pre-launch is when marketing kicks in and the game starts being publicized. Most of the source code is complete and the majority of in-game features are done or close to being finished. At the end of this phase, public betas will pop up here and there, both closed and open betas. At this point the game won't be changed apart from some balanced adjustments but nothing significant. And once all of this is done, the game finally reaches the launch phase, when the game is released and the developers collect all the feedback needed while fixing any technical issues the product might have. This phase varies in duration depending on the type of game it is and its monetization, but usually it takes between 2 to 6 months. After that, post-production begins, where patches are released on a weekly or monthly basis if the community is lucky, and traditional content is also created in the form of either traditional expansion level DLCs or cosmetic content to be sold as microtransactions. Or if you're feeling spicy, non-cosmetic microtransactions. Roadmaps are utilized in game creation during the production phase to increase the process efficiency, giving the different sectors of the team specific tasks and deadlines in order to make development as time slash money efficient as possible. This is where roadmaps began. They eventually became predominant on fund funded projects most commonly known as Kickstarters. They served the same purpose as before, but became a more simplified version of it for public consumption, so the community that is willing to pledge for the creation of the product knows how and for how long their money will be spent. Nowadays they are pretty much commonplace in the entire gaming industry, especially utilized in live service games or early access titles. However, unlike the previous two examples, these modern roadmaps are more of a byproduct of marketing than anything else showcasing timelines for small amounts of content to be released throughout months or years. This in theory is beneficial for the community, giving an idea of the type of content is going to be developed and when it's going to be published. It also creates a sense of trust between the dev team and the consumers, since the roadmap itself creates accountability on the part of the devs in case they fail to meet their self-established deadlines. In theory, of course. Because these can go awry really, really fast. Roadmaps can certainly be badly showcased or planned, and the most well-known case of a horrible roadmap at the moment is 343's Golden Goose Halo Infinite, which a month ago released a pathetic excuse of a roadmap, delaying content for months, planning to release extremely small amounts of content over the course of an entire year and outright cancelling features that were promised years ago, pretty bad for a half a billion dollar budget game that belongs to one of the most famous franchises in gaming history. That is certainly bad, but there's a game that somehow made one even worse. Enter The Isle, an early access survival game where players try to survive as prehistoric creatures in a hostile island filled with other players trying to do the same thing. The game itself is an entire mess of its own, and it's not relevant here. What it is, however, is its roadmap. On June 19th, 2020, Afterthought the developers of the game, released Evrima, 
a brand new and reworked version of the game, with the objective of reconstructing the entire source code of the game to fix the numerous issues that were present at the time. In vacuum, this seems to be a great move from the devs. If the foundation is broken, it needs to be repaired or make a new one entirely. There is one problem though. The launch was terrible. It released with only two dinosaurs in contrast with the previous 31, basically no features of the game were present, latency and desyncs were commonplace, the performance was worse than the previous version, half the community could even enter the server, this branch was so bad that it didn't even have a day and night cycle. In a survival game. Suffice to say that the community didn't like this, and both Reddit and Discord got absolutely flooded with complaints. So while fixing the mess that was Evrima's release, the developers got an idea to calm people down, so to speak. They released a roadmap, a way to show the different features and dinosaurs that were being worked on at the time and the different title updates we would have in the future. Sounds like a good idea, right? Well, yeah. But the problems with it started right from the beginning. For one, the updates didn't have any deadlines, meaning that they could arrive at any time. It could be in 6 weeks or 6 months which is, of course, a very smart move from them. Since doing like this, they are giving a false sense of trust without actually being accountable in case they miss a deadline, because they are none. Oh, but don't worry, this is only the beginning. The different chapters are divided into numbers, each one being a title update. The first update was a complete joke, not bringing half the features it was supposed to implement. Update 2 was released December 1st in the same year, almost 6 months after the brand's launch bringing three new playables and some legacy mechanics. Four months later came Update 3, a water-themed update bringing fish and four more animals, three of those being semi-aquatics. Or at least that's what the roadmap was saying. In reality only half the dinosaurs came out. The fourth update though. Oh boy. Oh boy! Initially Update 4 was supposed to introduce nesting and two dinosaurs, one of them being AI. So it was safe to assume that after the third update we would get that content, right? Well, apparently the developers disagree with that statement, since a few months later they completely changed the roadmap. Update 4 is now Update 7, being replaced with a UI overhaul, a perk system and a fracture mechanic. Fast forward 8 months, on December 16th, 2021, the update number 4 was finally released. What did we get? The UI changes and the perk system were nowhere to be found, Instead, we got a diet system alongside fractures and an additional dinosaur, which, I must add, was explicitly stated by the devs that it wasn't coming with this update. This last one might be a pleasant surprise, but I believe the word consistent is not a good word to characterize this roadmap. But wait, there's more. Update 5 was planned to be the diet system that was already implemented, so that's off the table, a gore system and two more dinosaurs. The update got released July 14th, 2022, 7 months after the previous one, and for no one's surprise, that's exactly what we didn't get. With the update came nesting and skin system from update 7, as well as night vision from update 6, and no dinosaurs whatsoever, despite the developers literally making teaser trailers for them. And that's what we have so far. The community is currently waiting for update 6, which is supposed to be gore, poison and a poisonous dinosaur, even though the developers already confirmed that Trudon won't come in this update, so for all we know the next patch can have anything but what's showcased in their roadmap. Suffice to say that nobody cares about it at this point, since the developers are so unreliable that they even contradict each other's statements, so your guess is as good as mine. Roadmaps may be hard to follow, but they are very easy to establish, and this dev team did neither. No deadlines, constant changes, the updates half the time don't have what says on the roadmap, and the devs more often than not state that the things present there are the things that we are not getting. The existence of a roadmap once created is more important than it seems at the first glance. By creating one, the developers are committing to follow a specific path and forming self-established timelines that generate expectation and reliability and as a consequence, trust. It's a form of communication that adds transparency to the game's development, which is a valuable resource when you want to create a solid, healthy and loyal fanbase. Now, of course developers are still people, and people make mistakes. It is natural for deadlines to not be met sometimes, or for content to be buggy or delayed. That is normal. The best course of action is to be honest to the community, be accountable and explain how they are going to fix the issue in the future. Making roadmaps work is very easy. Place deadlines, 
showcase the content each update will contain and follow the deadlines. Without these points, having one is absolutely pointless and the Alice world map was never supposed to be one, but rather a hype machine to keep the fans waiting for the next patch without abandoning ship and focusing on their competition. By constantly edging the community with content that it's either delayed or just cancelled, can keep a big portion of it engaged for an artificially long period of time. And that's even easier when the player base is made of miners. And since this is a dinosaur game we are talking about, it's pretty safe to assume that at least half of it is children. Halo's roadmap is very bad, but I guarantee you that this one is much, much worse. Thank you for watching. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server for memes and paleo stuff, and I hope to see you all next week.